We're going to talk about discharge relief valves, pressure governors, and intake relief valves. Pressure control systems used on the fire pump for controlling discharge pressure to protect handline operators. If you're operating three handlines without a relief valve system in place and you shut two of those handlines down, the pump doesn't know you've changed anything, the engine doesn't know you've changed anything, it's gonna try and take that pressure and flow from the two hand lines, forcing it into the third hand line, and someone is not happy because that line is gonna be overpressurized. The discharge relief valve and pressure governor systems both directly control discharge pressure. You'll typically have one or the other on your fire pump. A discharge relief valve will bypass pressure surges on the discharge side of the pump back to the intake side. The pressure governor will control discharge pressure by adjusting the engine RPM and impeller exit velocity. The intake relief valve will protect against pressure surges on the intake side of the pump. Let's talk briefly about basic pressure governor systems. Governor systems maintain the desired discharge pressure by controlling the engine RPM. Governors used on modern electronically controlled engines use a pressure transducer or sensor on the discharge manifold to feed current manifold pressure to the governor control head. Governors on older mechanically controlled engines would manually move the throttle linkage. As a discharge valve is opened, the pressure will drop on the discharge side of the pump and the governor will increase the RPMs to maintain the set pressure. As you shut down a discharge valve, the pressure will rise on the discharge side of the pump and the pressure governor will slow the engine RPM to again hold your set pressure. Let's talk about the Waterus discharge relief valve system. Discharge relief valve system will take the water from the discharge side of the pump and put it back into the intake. All right? There are two basic parts to a discharge relief valve system. You have a pilot valve or a control for the pump panel which is controlling an actual valve mounted down between the discharge of the pump and the intake of the pump. So we have the pilot valve controlling the relief valve. The relief valve again is mounted between the discharge side of the pump and the intake side. So this elbow and connecting pipe here come from the discharge side of the pump. The relief valve has a four bolt flange on it that will take water and put it back into the intake side. That's yeah, so how the water is going to escape off your two hand lines when you shut the hand lines down. So you've got the discharge fitting, elbow, connecting pipe, and then this is the valve. There's the four bolt flange and the water will come back up into the intake side when the valve is, is open. Right. Again, that's coming from the discharge. Here's your main valve. This is the piece in there that's cut away. This is the part that actually moves to open and close to bypass water from the discharge side back into the intake. So the main valve, how this works. This surface here faces the discharge side of the pump. So this is the elbow and connecting pipe coming here. This is pushing up against a seat, so it's seated like that. Your four bolt flange here will go back up into the intake side of the pump. That's how the water is going to escape. It'll escape from here up into the intake. In the back of the valve, there's a cavity about this deep, okay, and we have an O-ring sealing it off, so this is sliding in a sleeve, okay, so it's opening and closing like that. Okay. This is separate, that back cavity is separate from the intake side of the pump here. And how we control the valve is we will take discharge pressure, same pressure that's pushing here, route it through a small line up to the pilot valve to the control at your pump panel, and then bring it to the back side of the relief valve. When we want the valve to stay closed, you have the valve in the off position, or you have it set, but you don't have a spike in the system and you want the valve to stay closed, what we do is we keep equal pressure on both sides of the valve. So if you have 150 PSI pushing here, you'll have 150 PSI pushing here on this side. And the way we control the valve is the fact that the surface area in the back cavity is larger than the surface area facing discharge. Not a whole lot, just that beveled part. But it's larger, which means you have equal pressure on both sides. The larger surface area controls the valve. There's more physical force pushing on this valve to keep it closed. And what do you want to have happen when you have a spike in the system? You shut down a discharge valve. The pressure will rise because that water from that hand line you shut down is going to now be pushing here. Okay, the pressure is going to rise on this side. So the pressure rises up to the pilot valve, but now the pilot valve will dump that pressure, anything above set pressure, if you have the valve on, that pressure will dump back into the intake. 
only the pressure above your set pressure. So if you, had the, you were operating this at 150 PSI, that will retain 150 PSI on the back side of that valve. Only the pressure above 150 dumps off. The pressure being higher here than on this side, and the valve opens. And the water from the one hand line goes through back into the intake where it displaces incoming pressure. Right. You shut down another hand line. Okay. Pressure is going to rise more from that hand line being shut down on this side. Okay. So that extra pressure goes up to the pilot valve, dumps back to the intake. So that results in the pressure being even higher than the pressure in the back cavity because it's still 150 back here. Valve opens up a little more. You start opening those discharges back up and the pressure will actually start to lower here on this side because now the water is going back to the hand line. And now the pressures start to equalize a little more to the point where if you open all your valves back up, you shut down, you now have 150 PSI on both sides and it goes back to the closed position. So the water comes off the discharge again, pushes the main valve open, and the water goes back up into the intake where it displaces incoming pressure. That's an important part of this. You need a differential in pressure between discharge pressure and intake pressure. So for your discharge, pressure relief valve to work, you need a differential so the water goes back into the intake where it displaces incoming pressure, as we mentioned. Going through the pilot valve, different components on this. You have a large T-handle, and that T-handle is compressing a spring. As you turn the handle in, you're increasing the force on that spring. What you're pushing on is called the needle valve, and that needle valve is blocking off a passageway which goes back to the intake of the pump. This passageway is how the pressure above the set pressure on the pilot valve escapes back into the intake side of the pump, resulting in the difference in pressure between the front of the main valve and the pressure in the back cavity. And your pump panel again, you've got a strainer. So you take the strainer out, it's Monell screen. The strainer has two holes in it. There's a cross hole drilled across the end of the rod. There's a hole in the end of it that's drilled up to the cross hole. That hole is actually how we get water to the back side of the relief valve when the valve's in the on position. And you have an on-off valve that you can turn the valve into the on position or the off position. This is the on-off valve, also called the smiley face. We're gonna turn this to route water to different places inside the valve when you're turning the valve the on and the off position. You also have two lights. Amber light indicating when the valve is open, a green light to indicate when the valve is closed. The indicating lights are activated by a micro switch mounted on the back of the relief valve. There's a rod that extends out the back of the valve that contacts the micro switch when the valve opens. So in the off position, the water comes in, goes through the four-way valve, okay. this port goes to the back of the relief valve. 90 degree turn out of the pilot valve to the back side of the relief valve. It never comes over into the pilot valve or into this area over here. Equal pressure on both sides, valve stays closed. The on position, we have the valve set. Again, it's gonna take a certain amount of water pressure to overcome the spring pressure to push the needle valve off its seat. So right now we're operating the valve. We haven't had a spike in the system. We haven't, our discharge valves are operating. So the water flow comes in through the four-way valve. But now just rather than letting it go to the back of the relief valve, we're gonna route it over to the strainer. Through the cross hole, there's a flat surface here on the needle valve. It's pushing on that surface, trying to overcome spring pressure. But right now you don't have a spike in the system and that spring pressure is enough to keep the valve seated. Okay, the water goes through the strainer, through that orifice. It's gonna come over, trying to get back to the intake side, but the needle valve is seated off. So it can't get back to the intake side. So now it's gonna go back to the four-way valve, across the smile portion of the four-way valve, and back to the back side of the relief valve. Equal pressure, both sides of the valve, the valve stays closed. Now we have a spike in the system. So we shut down a discharge, all right? So again, that water's gonna take the same path. It comes into the four-way valve on the front side of it. Again, not allowing it to go to the back of the valve. We're gonna route it over to the strainer. Okay, it's gonna go through the strainer and it's gonna push on the needle valve on that flat surface. But now it has enough pressure to push the needle valve in that direction, which is gonna open up that passageway back to the intake side. But again, the only pressure that's gonna be relieved is only the pressure above what the valve is set at. So if this was set at 150 PSI, only the pressure above 150 will be bled out. 
The remaining pressure goes through that line, goes back to the back side of the relief valve, and now only the pressure above 150 or above the setting on this will be relieved back into the intake side of the pump. To set your discharge relief valve, engage the pump and open at least one discharge valve or recirculation valve. Increase the engine RPM until the master pressure gauge indicates the desired set point plus 5 PSI. With the valve turned off, the green light will be illuminated. Turn the pilot valve to the on position. If the gauge pressure drops below the desired setting and the amber light illuminates, turn the T-handle clockwise. The pressure will rise as the spring compresses the needle valve, restricting flow past the needle valve back into the intake. When the desired set pressure is established, the amber light will go out and the green light will come on. Move the T-handle to get the lights to flicker between open and closed and leave the system with the green light illuminated. If the gauge pressure doesn't drop and the green light stays illuminated when the pilot valve is turned on, turn the T-handle counterclockwise until the green light goes out and the amber light comes on. This will typically be slightly less than the desired set pressure. Turn the T-handle in slowly until the set pressure is achieved. The lights flicker again between open and closed and leave the system with the green light illuminated. Exercising the relief valve system is very important. The system is a safety device. A non-operational pressure control system is a pump out of service condition per NFPA 1911. Right. Exercising the valve. You want this valve to go as far open as it can go, completely closed. As far open as it can go, completely closed to exercise the back side of the valve. So the best way to do that is running the pump at 150 PSI, recirculating water. Okay, valve's in the off position, take the strainer out. Okay, at that point, clean the strainer. This is a 1L screen, so just clean it out. Make sure the cross hole is clean. Make sure the hole in the very end is open. Okay, clean it off, blow through it, take a small piece of wire, run it in there. Make sure that's clean. If that's plugged, you'll get a valve that'll hunt. It'll open and closed or it'll be very slow and sluggish to respond to go back to the, the closed position. But take it out, clean it, make sure the O-rings are in good condition, set it off to the side. 150 PSI, recirculating water. Take the valve and move it to the on position. The water from the four-way valve, it's gonna go to where the strainer was, because that was the first place it went in the pilot valve. Strainer's not there, so there's no uh, orifice in there, or hole, or cross hole or anything, so it's gonna bleed out through that opening where the strainer was. Okay? And it's gonna gush out through here. So when you turn it on, you're gonna get a gush of water. If you didn't have your hand there, you get your feet wet. Shut it off. Then do that about a half a dozen times. Every time you turn it on, because the water can't get to the back side of the relief valve because that strainer's not in there, there's no water pressure on the back side of this valve. So this valve will go as far open as it can go. When you shut it off, you now pressurize the back side with equal pressure, valve's gonna go close again. Doing this, you are exercising the, the complete valve. As far open as it can go, and then all the way closed. All right, so that's the first step. Second step is put the strainer back in, 150 PSI, valve's in the off position. Now I'll take all the tension off the spring handle, back it all the way out. Okay, remove that pressure. You turn the valve on and turn it off. Okay, now with the strainer in there though, when you turn it on, the water pushes on the needle valve and it's going to push the needle valve open. So it compresses the spring, opens up the passageway back to the intake off of this area. So when we exercise this with the strainer in, no spring tension on the T-handle, and we turn it on and off, we are exercising the needle valve area, okay, getting this area to move. The first way, without the strainer in, exercise the main valve, and that will get you keep your valve functioning properly. There is a note on the pump panel that says reduce pressure slightly with throttle before turning relief valve off. What that note is about is if you are flowing hand lines and the amber light is on, that indicates or means that the valve is open. If you turn this valve off, it's gonna close the valve, which means all the pressure that's going through the relief valve at that time will go out to the hand lines. 
right? So that's what that note means. When we're exercising it, we don't care about the note. It's only when you're flowing hand lines and when you are, that amber light is on that you're concerned about it, all right? You typically want to set your discharge relief valve about 5 PSI above the pressure you want to operate at. The relief valve is sensitive enough that slight discharge pressure fluctuations will open and close the main valve without moving it far enough to activate the micro switch in the indicating lights. This results in a small stream of high pressure water being forced into the relief valve whenever the valve fluctuates open. This will damage the valve over time. Also, if you are closing a discharge valve and will not be reopening it, Decrease the RPM of the engine until the relief valve closes. This will reduce the erosion wear in the valve body over the life of the pump as well. As discussed previously, the discharge relief valve system requires a differential between discharge and intake pressure. The discharge pressure must be able to overcome the intake pressure to bypass back into the intake side of the pump. If the pressure spikes on the intake side, the discharge relief valve may not be able to relieve back into the intake. The waterous intake relief valve system works the same as the waterous discharge relief valve system. You have a relief valve on the intake side of the pump and a pilot valve that controls that relief valve. The major difference is the intake relief valve system will dump to atmosphere if there's a spike on the intake side of the pump. The pilot valve uses a control knob to compress a spring to push on a control piston. The valve can be set between 50 and 250 PSI, so it can be adjusted for your operating conditions. NFPA suggests setting the intake relief valve about 90 PSI below your operating discharge pressure. The intake pressure passes through the pilot valve to the back cavity of the relief valve. The pilot valve controls the pressure in that back cavity. The piston in the intake relief valve has a larger surface area on the back side compared to the front side facing the intake side of the pump. If there's a pressure surge on the intake side of the pump and the pressure rises above the pilot valve setting, the pilot valve will dump the pressure above set pressure to atmosphere. That results in the pressure on the front side of the relief valve piston being higher than the pressure in the back cavity. The relief valve will open and dump the pressure surge to atmosphere. It's just as important to maintain the intake relief valve system as it is to maintain the discharge relief valve system. They both are safety pressure control systems. Remove the strainer from the pilot valve and inspect it for damage and blockage. Clean and reinstall it if it's in good condition. Remove the throttle screw and inspect the passageway for blockage and check the stainless steel stem's integrity. To exercise the valve, connect the intake of the pump to another pumper or water source, bring about 100 PSI into the pump, turn the pilot valve adjustment knob above and below the incoming pressure. This will exercise the intake relief valve.